I have noticed that my endurance improves when I'm fasting. I've also noticed that I seem to perform better in all kinds of different athletic ventures when I'm fasting, not just specifically during a fast, but when I have been very regimented with my fasting. Well, I wanna look at some of Dr. David Sinclair's research that was really fascinating surrounding the world of NAD and how it can actually improve muscle function and endurance. It's pretty wild because you have to look at stem cells and you have to look at what's called VEGF, vascular endothelial growth factor. Very interesting stuff that sounds complicated, but it's actually very basic when we break it down. Hey, before we go any further, I invite you to check out Thrive Market down below. They're an online membership-based grocery store. They're a tremendous supporter and sponsor of this channel and they're awesome. So when it comes down to being able to order your groceries online, they are the bee's knees. Like any kind of pantry staple you can think of, you can get, but all in the better for you category. So if you're looking at things like for a ketogenic protocol or things that you could eat after you break a fast or vegan, vegetarian, paleo, whatever, you can just sort, identify whatever you wanna eat, click on it, ship it, and it gets to your doorstep in a couple of days. And you don't have to go to the grocery store. You don't have to go hunting trying to find these obscure foods that you might only find at some random hole foods and some random hole in the wall. It's just very difficult to find those kinds of foods sometimes. It just makes it super convenient. So I went ahead, I put a link down below that can save you 25% off of a membership, but also get you a free gift when you use that link. So I highly recommend you check them out. And again, big thank you to Thrive Market for the continued support. And thank you to you for supporting our sponsors that support us. I wanna first start off by explaining what happens with fasting and what's called NAD. So I'll make this very, very brief. The reason that fasting potentially has like longevity benefits, if you wanna call it that, is generally because caloric restriction improves what's called the NAD to NADH ratio. And I'll just make it exceptionally just over the top easy. When you eat food, you take some of your what is called NAD and it becomes what's called NADH. So you basically decrease your amount of NAD because that NAD is required to bring electrons, energy from the food into the cell to be used for fuel, okay? So during that process, NAD goes down. Well, when NAD is higher, you have levels of NAD that are left over. Those leftover levels of NAD can actually go and activate something called a sirtuin. And these sirtuins are pro-longevity gene. And they've been researched heavily for like the last maybe 15, 20 years. Okay, so when we increase the activity of sirtuins, we improve longevity-like benefits. So this NAD activation is very important, okay? And when we're fasting, we potentially increase that NAD because we have no food in our system depleting the NAD. So there we go, that's the breakdown of it. So now let's look at this research. This first study was published in the journal Cell, again, by Dr. David Sinclair. So this took a look at NAD and sirtuins and how they are involved in what is called VEGF, that is vascular endothelial growth factor. And this is a cascade that allows for more capillary density. That means you're allowing yourself to have more tissue perfusion, meaning you're creating more blood flow into the nooks and crannies of various tissues. This is super, super important. And as we get older, we have more desire. We need more of this angiogenesis. We need more of this overall like vascular endothelial growth factor because it decreases. And ultimately when it comes down to performance, we want glucose and fatty acids and everything to get into those little nooks and crannies of our tissue so that we can get the proper nutrient delivery. Well, in this study, they took mice and they knocked out SIRT1. So SIRT1, again, is a gene that's gonna get activated by ultimately fasting, right? So in mice, they got rid of this SIRT1. When they got rid of it, they only ran for 11 minutes on a treadmill. They put them on a treadmill. It's kind of cute to think about a little mouse on a treadmill, but ran for 11 minutes. In the control mice that did not have the SIRT1 knocked out, the mice ran for 25 minutes. But when they overexpress SIRT1, and I'm just gonna you know, go out on a limb and say, you know, in similar fashion to maybe what fasting might do, overexpression of SIRT1, they ended up running for 46 minutes. I mean, that's pretty clear, right? Put them on a treadmill, how long do they run until they just give up? Well, SIRT2 in expression, as a result of more than likely vascular endothelial growth factor, allowed them to have more endurance. Well, there was another study that looked at NAD and stem cells. There was another Dr. David Sinclair study. And this one found that NAD played a role in the activity of what are called satellite cells. Now, again, this is going to be an oversimplification, but satellite cells are like little cells that are kind of floating above our muscle. And when we work our muscle and stimulate growth, those satellite cells will actually fuse and allow the growth of muscle tissue. So we need this, they're sort of like a stem cell, and they are a stem cell. And NAD increases stimulate more of these stem cells, more of these satellite cells. 
So essentially, when we get older, we have a decline in stem cells, and that decline in stem cells will make cells well, irreplicable. And this is important not just for aging, but just in general. In, in a fasted state, we're going to have more of this NAD available. Well, in a study that was published in Cell by Dr. David Sinclair, he found that when he added nicotinamide riboside to influence NAD production or NAD availability, it made a big difference in terms of satellite cell activity. In fact, it corrected the mitochondrial function of satellite cells that maybe weren't functioning as well before. So when he took a look at healthy aging mice and he gave them nicotinamide riboside to influence NAD, he saw that they improved endurance tremendously by activating these satellite cells in their muscle. So between activating satellite cells with the muscle and then also activating sirtuins, which have this role in vascular endothelial growth factor, that is a wicked combination to potentially improve just performance and just endurance. It's quite fascinating. And in that same study, they looked at the VEGF. They also found that when they gave older mice NMN, those older mice ran to exhaustion longer than older mice that were not given NMN. And this isn't to say, take NR, take NMN. Not at all, that's not what I'm getting at. My point is, this is how they sort of artificially influenced NAD. They probably could have done a similar thing by having them fasted. There's other studies that look at mitochondrial function in fasted mice with CERT3 activation. I've talked about that in other videos. The bottom line is simple. Fasting seems to upregulate all these different processes and the availability of NAD makes sirtuins more activated, which has this pro, let's call it a pro longevity effect. But in reality, it's just better for recovery and better for overall just performance too. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.